So I had the incredible opportunity of working with Robin in government. And uh, we met at the first robotics competition in St. Louis. How many people have ever had a kid do first robotics? Anybody? It's an amazing program where the kids build and then they run this competition. You were there. One of the things you said to me is that you, as Secretary of State, you had crowdsourced something around backlog in voting. And I thought, wow, this is a person who thinks differently. We ended up on a plane together and I'm like, have you ever thought of coming to help us? And I thought, Robin could really help us. In the federal government, there's $80 billion of federal IT spend that we directly spend. It's a lot of COBOL. It's a lot of upgrade we've got to do. And there's 60 billion that goes through grants to all the state local. And I thought Robin could be the leader. And I was talking to her and she said she was open to it. She got connected to the 18F team and that started. So can you talk a little bit about what you're doing and how you guys are thinking and maybe a little bit about Secretary of State time? Yeah, thank you. So uh, yeah, Megan, let me thank you. It's great to be here and um, to be with such a group of forward thinkers on this issue of technology. You know, uh, my, I have this passion about being in government, served in government, you heard me say, lost more sleep doing tech projects than anything else I did in government. But the fundamental issue is that government is a service delivery business, right? And service delivery now is digital. And so government's got to get with it. And one of the reasons I think that people have lost faith in government is because we're so far behind in just doing the simple things. So for me, this really became a passion project. And <laughs> at 18F, we're a team of technologists that sort of the dream team I wished I'd had access to when I was in office. Non-conflicted, know what's going on, know how to advise and have the public's interest at heart. And so uh, I run the team that works with state and local governments. That's, that's where my heart is. Uh, and there's this, as Megan said, a huge amount of money, 60 billion with a B a year that flows to state and local governments. And a lot of that is in IT. And if we can help make that better, faster and cheaper and not reinvent the wheel 50 times for city or 19,000 times for, for 50 times for states, 19,000 times for cities, we're saving money and we're providing great service. So uh, that's what we're working on and it's super fun. Yeah, so like think about that. All the open source code, like if you went to a Google or an Amazon or Facebook, often if there's 10 line of code, 10, line, 10 lines of code, six of them would be written by somebody outside. And they would pull that in by open source and then adapt it. So what if we could have that for our cities, you know, for our child welfare systems, for our traffic ticket systems, all these different things. And it can be not us building all this tech and government. No one wants to do that. It wants to come from the amazing commercial sector that we have. But we can use the modern practices of open source. And we were able to do that policy work and bring that in. Can you talk a little bit about some of the projects you guys have done so people have a feeling for that and, uh, and how that looks? And, and the team that Robin's referring to is um, a team that's in the GSA, so taking the General Services Administration, who looks at stuff that's overlapping, whether it's the payroll work across all the agencies or the buildings across all the agencies, but also the tech across all the agencies and having some of that centralized citizen services uh, data.gov and other places, this particular team is people who used to build Amazon and Facebook and Google and Twitter and Dropbox coming to serve their country for a period of time and rotating in with others who are ex excellent in tech, who are in government and teaming up. Yeah, it's, it's like I said, it's the tech dream team that is doing their public service. Um, and the work that we're doing on the state and local side of this, a lot of it is in healthcare, right? So if you think about Medicaid, which is the largest line item in almost every state budget. It's a federal program. The rules are primarily federal rules. And then it's administered by states. Likewise, there's a child welfare program, <laughs> federal program administered by states. All of these things get built 50 times. It's just amazing. Most of them are, as Megan said, these old COBOL systems that if that if we had better systems for tracking things, kids' health outcomes would be different. People's lives would be changed dramatically. And so uh, one good example is we were working with the California Child Welfare Office. It's the biggest child welfare office in the world. They have 500,000 kids and 20,000 social workers and they needed a new tracking system because they had literally lost a kid, meaning a kid died because 
social workers couldn't see the history of contact that the abuser had had with the kid. So this created a political crisis, as well it should have. Got enough interest that the governor and the legislature allocated money to rebuild this thing so that you'd have a modern computer system to be able to take care of kids in the state. But they were going to do it the same old way, and this all happened right around the time you remember the Obamacare rollout and how that opened everybody's eyes to how you can't do policy and government anymore if you don't get the tech right, because that's all people will remember, that the damn website didn't work. So California decided to stop doing this giant waterfall. They were planning a $400 million rebuild project of this COBOL thing and to break it in in chunks. And to do that, they were going to, it was hard, right? Because it took a cultural change. And most of this in government is not really about the hardness of the technology. People use that word innovation all the time. I'm like, it's not innovative. It's been happening in the private sector for a long time. It's new to government. And so it really is about transforming people's thoughts about what's possible in government. And, uh, and they're building it all open source, all very public, using smaller vendors. And hopefully what's going to happen is they're going to have a system that in the end can be reused by other states, which bravo is the way it ought to work. Yeah, and what's interesting is if you think about that, you know, when the Amazon team wanted to build Amazon, they may have written the vision, but then they started with books. And then they added CDs. And then they, and so they're building in this very agile way. And it's the same way that now this is architected. And for those who want to know how could I do something like that, the 18F team scrubbed in with, I think, Code for America and some others. And they just did a sprint, just a couple weeks, maybe 75K of work that was about $400, $400 million allocation. You know, let's build this. Uh, instead, they did a sprint and looked through how they might do it differently, and it became a much shorter RFP. Uh, I think the amount of money to be spent dropped by, you know, a, a factor of something, I don't know, a factor of four or so. Um, and, and then it was like, what will we do first and next and next and next and setting it open? And so that cost maybe, I don't know, 100K or something. Right. So the, like, in all fairness, it's not done yet. It's still a work in progress. But I will say that the budget has been 15% of, of what was original originally plan. estimated. Yeah, and they're getting working code. So remember me talking about demos, not memos, and doing small things with smaller cost up front to make sure it works? That's the, that's the agile methodology they're using. And it's so much better than spending, you know, $100 million for a giant document that really provides not a lot of value. So thinking about doing that in that new way. And, and one of the things that you said was talking about tech talent themselves. Not only the team at 18F who, they didn't go rebuild the system. They just scrubbed in for a couple of weeks to rewrite the RFP. So that's a good use of them. Think a little bit like Surgeon General. You know, it's not like the Surgeon General is out doing all the surgeries in the world, but they're making sure that we have the right, they're sitting right here in the team, and they're making sure that we know best in case medical, best in case, you know, practice. So maybe as just the last thing um, about how do you find a tech person like this for your government team? Yeah, people are always asked that question, like, how do you get this talent? How can government afford these tech people? It turns out, that here's the secret weapon here, folks. Write this one down. People are patriotic. Yeah, they are. They want to. They want to serve. Yeah, it's That's really it. quite. They want to give back to the community, thing. and so if you can figure out how to give them a project that has impact, that they can feel like they can make a difference for their community, uh, they're going to step up and serve. So, I say just ask. Yeah, the ISIL example, the fighting ISIL example. Those people came immediately, uh, and you know, just took those weeks off, and they were right there. And what was cool and special, or what was really special about that and this work is that the colleagues treat them as peers. So I think that the tech folk, pro that they probably don't want to come if they're kind of treated like the help and everybody decides the plan and hands them a thing that's architecturally incorrect. That's how you get health care to um, But you put them in the seat and you make the plan together. And also, it will be wrong if the economist isn't there, and if the lawyer isn't there, and the communicator, and the management person, and the person who really knows what they're doing. I always feel like the techies, they're like the Navy SEALs uh, team lock picker. It's not like they really know how to run the play, but they know how to get the building and through the doors. Yeah, and so you, that if you whole cross-functional team part is just crucial in all of this, because you have to have the people with the tech skill, but the people with the business side that know 
know the line of work, whether it's in healthcare or child welfare, whatever it is. Um, and you need to have the procurement people, you need to have the lawyers, and it turns out magic will happen if you put everybody in the same room and get them aligned on priorities. Um, this whole notion of government sort of delaying things and throwing things over the fence and making it somebody else's job, you empower this cross-functional team and back them up, and it's really remarkable how much you can get accomplished. Yeah, it's really, and, and the impact is huge because of the scale of government. Yep. Yeah, so, um, Robin, thank you for your amazing service and what you're doing. I'm, I think we rotate now. We're okay. out of time, so yes. you're going to take this thank seat, you. the next person up. But uh, for those who are going to do this, find those people. We're happy to ask uh, you know, to help with how to do that. And they're there, and they would love to be in your teams. Yep. All right. Thanks, Thanks Megan. Robin.